Good morning. morning. We are here to celebrate the life of a very, very special person. I have been blessed to have known uh, Bob since being here and uh, have my own set of Bob lore uh, that I could uh, talk about and will. Um, you uh, as family have many, many more stories, many of them associated with some of the pictures up here. Uh, you will see yourself and see him in that. Uh, you see him in um, the way the altar is laid out. Um, part of his life is literally here. Um, we are here to uh, celebrate that life. Um, there, is, there will be tears. Uh, there are already tears. Um, there is a real mourning that, that will take place. Anytime you have a person who touches your life the way Bob did to touch lives, uh, when that person is gone, there is a hole. Um, and we will not run away from that hole. Uh, in fact, we will um, uh, stay in it a moment and uh, truly mourn and get the mourning piece uh, sort of out of the way so that we can really get to the celebrating piece because that is really what we'll, we will do most uh, today and in the hours that follow this as you have your family stories uh, and uh, from now on as you have uh, your memories. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. I hold the keys of hell and death because I live, you shall also live. We are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Robert Magoon. I must admit that that will probably be the only time I call him Robert because to me he was always Bob. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God search our hearts, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. It sometimes surprises some folks that one of the most well known of all Bible verses, John 3, 16, is in fact a perfect verse and section of the Bible, of the gospel, to start a memorial service or funeral with. From the third chapter of John. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can, I, how can you believe if I tell of you of heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world, not to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that we might have eternal life. Let us pray. O oh God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. 
give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our summons comes, we may die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in you and nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We are here thinking of and celebrating the life of and mourning the passing of a man who took full use of his years on earth. He went kicking and screaming. He started to come to the end only because he wouldn't give up walking up and down steps. <laughs> you, you literally could not hold him back. This is the kind of life we all want to lead. This is the kind of life that blesses us when we are part of it. And he, as you can tell from how his family grieves in this moment, but also how you see him in these pictures and how you know of his stories, that he took life by the horns and did not let go. He particularly loved nature and did the kinds of things that you do in nature, and particularly the kinds of things you do in this part of the world. You don't let the snow stop you. You hardly let the ice stop you. <laughs> You certainly don't let temperature stop you or mud or anything else that goes along with nature. And I find it providential that on his passing, we get the first thaw of this really hard winter. And this room is filled with flowers, the signs of nature. And it just fits. It just seems like God has smiled down on this time. It is the beauty of nature that he wanted to share with his family. He built canoes. He did the kinds of things that need to be done that really nobody else wants to do so you can go camping. <laughs> but he also taught you how to do those things. Not because he didn't want 
to do them himself, he was glad to do it. But he also knew that if you didn't learn, you would not be able to pass on what he was giving you. He was just that kind of guy. Here at the church, he was a member of at least two commissions the entire time I've been here. And he would amble up East Road, and come across the busy traffic. And all of us who are here would say a quick prayer that Bob could make it from his house to here. Because we knew we weren't going to stop him. That wasn't an option. And he wouldn't let you come get him until you really needed that. And if he needed to get up in the middle of the meeting and go home because he was uncomfortable, he got up in the meeting, middle of the meeting and went home because he was uncomfortable. I truly already miss him ambling from that last pew on this side down the aisle at any time in the service when he was done because he could only sit for so long. But the other part of that is he could only sit for so long. He wanted to continue to live and fought as hard as he could. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of those who have finished their course in life and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. We praise you for your child, Bob, whom you have taken to yourself. Grant peace to his soul. Let perpetual light shine upon him and help us to so believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them, with him, into joy. A joy and a home not made with hands, but eternal in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 130 speaks particularly to the tears. Out of the depths I cry unto thee, O Lord, hear my cry. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou may be worshipped in awe. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is great mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their sins. The psalm that's most often said at these times is the one you would think it is, Psalm 23. But it reminds me particularly of Bob, uh, particularly as he would help Betty with her Sunday school classes, who tended to be the young ones. And there was more than one time Bob shepherded in them somewhere, uh, these little sheep um, wanting to go this way and that. Uh, Betty so intent on giving them the lesson that they were to find that day. But inevitably, one would wander off, or when they were, it was time to go, they needed to get to their families, and there was Bob always, a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
And particularly as I think of the challenges that Bob faced just at the end of his life, with age catching up to him and his desire not to be left out of anything catching up with him, and a family that he was not ready to give up, and those blasted stairs that he had to go up and down. Reminds me of the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now Tim has something to bring you from the family. I wrote down some memories of my father, and I'm going to read it, because if I try to do this freehand, I'm going to start stumbling all over myself. I'm going to look at my daughter over here blubbering. I'll start blubbering. <laughs> okay, I remember being eight or nine, and my father waking me up at 3.30 in the morning to go hunting with him for the first time. Get up if you're coming with me, he whispered to rouse me from my sleep. My stomach was doing flip-flops around the butterflies from being ex excited and awake way too early. It was Thanksgiving morning, and we did see a deer. A yearling, my father said. We were able to hear the mother call to it from out of sight from us. The yearling stood there looking at us, then at its mother, and back again before trotting off after its mother. And my father used to smoke, quitting during his angioplasty procedure in 1990, but to this day, when I smell cigarette smoke, I'm reminded of being on a ridgetop, again, hunting with my father, and he lighting a cigarette to determine wind direction. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going over to the shop, which was Camp Johnson, helped my father work on the car, because he never took it to a mechanic. And as I got older, he helped me with mine, always ready to help whenever he could. I was helping a friend put a roof on his father-in-law's house, and my father just showed up, didn't know wasn't asked, but he showed up to help. He helped the electrical companies get power back on up in the islands after the big ice storm in 98 or 99. He worked with Trout Unlimited, rebuilding riverbanks, mostly on the Winooski River. Volunteered with the Fish and Game Department, talk, uh, stocking trout and salmon in various streams. And of course, 30 plus years with the Colchester Fire Department, who named him a lifetime member. Like I said, he helped others. I was helping my father stock salmon fry very little tiny itsy bitsy fish in the Browns River up near Underhill State Park. The fish and game department was trying to establish a salmon fishery in the river. I don't think, I don't think it worked. <laughs> the water's too warm. This is where he had his heart attack, May 13th, 2000. Thank God I was with him and God bless the woman in the farmhouse nearby. Her sister across the road was a nurse at the medical center and gave him aspirin to chew which saved his life while well, the Essex rescue was on its way. He had triple bypass surgery, and six weeks later, true to his, his way, he was helping me shingle a roof <laughs> on the house I just bought in Essex. And then nine years later, he helped me put a roof on my house in St. Albans. At that time, he was 70 years old. My father and I took week-long fishing, camping canoe trips to the outer Adirondacks. Took three of them, one to Fish Pond and two to Fish Creek area fishing in the morning and evening and taking the rest of the, and talking the rest of the day. We got most of the world's problems solved every time. <laughs> Too bad nobody listened or maybe it's good they didn't. Those are the memories of my father that come quickly to mind. He was my father for close to 60 years and if I sit here long enough I could come up with a book full. He was a great man to me. 
someone I certainly looked up to. He was loving with a happy disposition and never had anything bad to say about anybody. Rest in peace, Dad. And then I added something else that I was thinking about as I wrote this. Aging, getting older, is such a curse at times. You live a full life, being a loving father and husband, a good provider for the family, maybe even serve your country and or community, and your, your reward is that as you get older, things start being taken away from you. Your hearing, your eyesight, your mobility, your independence, your loved ones, your memory and mind. You know the greatest reward awaits you upon your death but it would, be, it would be nice if it didn't come at such a cost as you got closer to it. Thank you. I think one of the reasons that I bonded with Bob so quickly when I got here was partly because he was so easy to get to know and he gave of himself immediately and fully. And you felt like you had known him for years, even if it was only a few minutes into your first conversation. But the other reason was he has a striking resemblance to my grandfather in his uh, size and in his body shape, um, but his feistiness. I always referred to my um, my grandfather as a banty rooster, and uh, I think those of you who know uh, roosters uh, and banty ones uh, can see that in uh, Bob. But one of the things that he said speaks exactly to what Tim was saying in his little added remark that he had been a three-pack-a-day smoker himself and had been one of the very first to get radiation treatment and it burned him badly and it, it did affect his last um, months of life. And one day we were talking about this. I was a teenager at the time. And he said, you're going to get old one of these days and it's going to be hard. But you have to remember that that's what life is. We have to make room for the next generation. We have to spend our whole lives giving of ourselves to them. And at some point, that giving of ourselves catches up with us. So just get ready. And ever since then, as I've seen people grow old, I can't help but remember that. And I think Bob is just the prime example. And it's what drove you to, to write that last little bit, is that Growing old is not particularly fun, but it's part of that having given of yourself. And I think those who gave of themselves the most during their lives seem often to be the ones that the most is taken away as they grow older. But what's remarkable is that those are the very same people who do that gracefully. Now, we all heard him grumble about this from time to time and those of you who saw him in the intense pain that he was in from time to time would not say it was ever pretty. But for him it was just part of this life that he was going through and the problem he had was not so much that he was slowing down but that he would soon not be here with you. But for him that was okay because of his faith. But it was even more okay because of those of you who are sitting here. He left something wonderful behind. You can't help but know that in the pictures that you see. You can't help but know that in the conversations I would overhear as y'all were gathering and the stories you were telling and the things you were remembering. That is, in fact, the Christian message. 
that life is to be lived in its fullest, and it's not death. We even have the cross as our symbol in Christianity. But as John 3.16 reminds us, the cross is a symbol not that death is the end, but death has been overcome. Death ultimately only matters in that life matters. And God set up life to be regenerative. And I love the story of, of, of feeding fish to the ecosystem, trying to make a river have fish that it would not normally have. What a Bob thing to do. But also what a Christ-like thing to do, to try to bring life wherever you find that it's not there. And you can remember all of those times when in your own grief or your own problems, there was Bob to help you with the roof or just to laugh with you or to hug you. We will miss him. But he literally gave his life, not just for you, but for the community and the world. And what better thing to say of a man? Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To those who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold each other. In all our ways, we trust you. And to you, with your church on heaven and on earth, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. In talking with uh, Betty and Linda, um, they said, if anyone else would like to say something, you can certainly do it. I will tell you that it turns out usually to be much harder to do than you think it is. And it is okay not to, don't feel any pressure. But certainly if anyone wants to say anything, there will be plenty of time as family later to do that. So again, this is not meant as a challenge, just as an invitation. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. Keep you in the knowledge and the love of Jesus our Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace. Take your time as you leave. Don't feel like you all have to get up and go. If you want to spend one more time uh, up here with the ashes of this man or the, these pictures, feel free to do so as you leave. We're in no hurry. God be with you. Amen.